So these are five foot T posts and for this uh, configuration of fence that we're installing today, we need to sink them 18 inches below ground. So, so Russ is just marking 18 inches and uh, we'll stop pounding when that mark gets to the top of the, or at the original grade. We're using a piece of uh, PZDC pipe to uh, to mark the distance between the posts and just hand hand pound each post. T post should be located in the center of the trench, so there's room to insert the the barrier material. So to make it a little bit easier to move these rolls around, these rolls weigh about 65 pounds. Um, Russ uses a, a six foot dowel, and uh, so it's easier for two guys to carry it and locate it to the correct position. For the purpose of this video, we're gonna cut uh, sort of in between two posts um, artificially because uh, we wanna show how to splice the two segments together. Next step is to hang the fence, insert it into the trench, And this is uh, usually easy to do with a hundred foot section with three three people you can usually get it up. The fence is very flexible so that you know the the further end of the fence might flop down a little bit but at this point you start tying it with zip ties, plastic zip ties right at the climate barrier crease right at the top leave room for that crease to bend down and then Russell put another zip tie about halfway down or as far as his arms can reach really because you don't want to have a person on both sides of the fence feeding zip ties to each other or minimize that as much as possible so if one person can do it just the length of the arms is enough and then when Russ uh, hangs the fence he uh, pushes back fills the soil right there at that point so it doesn't kick out while they're working on the rest of the fence So we do that at every single post, and then after that's completed, we uh, get on to the next step. So the second section is going up. What you want to do is make sure you overlap at least eight inches. Um, Russ is going to just do the initial part of the uh, seam, and we'll come back and show you the rest of it in a bit. This, uh, what he does is just to hold it in place as he puts a couple of zip ties through at the top the seam. It's important that there's no gaps there for uh, the critters to get through. And then they continue with the remainder of this installation, tying it to the post with a couple of couple of ties. We're using zip ties for this installation. Zip ties are great for uh, a fence that has to stay in place for a couple of years. If the fence has to be in place for two years or longer, we always recommend to use wire ties. Just eight inch cut pieces of wire. Work great. Right. A 16 gauge. The next step is to close all gaps where the sections overlap. And go along the side, connect them down flat with zip ties. About six inches apart from each other. Is to get them to where these gaps don't happen. You don't have any bul bulges in the fence. The critters can't get through there. So we put um, zip ties on both sides so the critters can't get through on, on either side of the fence. Also notice that the zip ties are below the climber barrier crease. There's a, 
climber barrier crease here. This particular fence is going to have a climber barrier, and uh, we, we uh, make sure that the zip tie is below that so that it doesn't interfere with the uh, with the top lip. So what we do is uh, place the wire at the very top corner of the climber barrier and at the very first post wrap it a couple times and then uh, Russell tie it tight around the uh, he'll wrap it around the, uh, the guide wire and then just pull it hand tight we don't have to tension it any more than that just pull it hand tight between the posts wrap it one time at each post and then move on to the next post if for some reason that spool gets all tangled up it's not a problem to cut it and at that point just wrap it three times around the post twice or three times around the post and then start the next one and uh, continue on that way and a good method at the uh, when you get to a T post where the fence stops and there's still plenty more to install just hang the wire on the last T post there until you're ready to start installing more fence Okay, the next step is to put on a couple of wire accessories. One is the uh, climber barrier bracket. This goes over the top and keeps the climber barrier in place so the wind doesn't blow it up. And this is the guide wire clip. It, it uh, pushes through the E-fence and then crimps to the guide wire and it keeps, uh, it keeps the uh, tension uh, you know, to the fence so that uh, when it's blowing in the wind, the, the fence is able to move and absorb some of that energy, but um, the fence stays in place. The guy, guy wire holds it there. So we're gonna go ahead and start putting those on. This goes every three feet. Both of these go every three feet. And in fact, you can put these in the same location. And Russ is gonna show you his method. So Russ's method here, since we're putting these uh, basically three feet or a meter apart, Russ uh, just calibrates his step so that he knows the distance, what the distance should be, so that he doesn't have to keep constantly measuring. Um, then these uh, these clips are pushed through the fence and just crimped off. This is a nice tool. This wire cutter actually is a nice tool for doing that. It's quick, and you want to crimp those tight enough so that the wind doesn't knock them loose. That's done pretty well. So we just put one of those every three feet. So we put those guide wire clips right at the climber barrier crease, right underneath the crease, so that when this gets creased down, it's, it's down below. Okay, so the next step is to install the climber barrier bracket, and the climber barrier brackets go right next to the guide wire bracket, so you don't really have to measure these out. Just put, you know, within a few inches of the, the uh, guide wire bracket. So what Russ does is he measures down from the top of the fence, just using the length the opening portion of that bracket so he knows exactly where to insert the bottom section and then goes over the top and then since this side is flexible it's easy to put this side in on the short flap and that's it and you want to make sure that this bracket that there's very little clearance here you want this apex to be as close as possible to the crease of the climber barrier The next step, the next step is to backfill the trench, and the trench here is in the shade. It's kind of hard to see, but uh, there's some trench spoils along the edge of the trench here. And what we want to do is start backfilling on the the fence side first. What you want to do is push the fence up against the post, and then backfill on the other side. So uh, he's going to go ahead and start backfilling. What you want to do is make sure that there's no gaps or places, tunneling opportunities for, for the critters. You can also use, if you've got a, a right-on trencher with a, a blade and a good operator, you can also use the blade of the trencher to push the spoils back into the trench. Got to make sure the operator's a good one though, because one little mistake can tear the fence. And then rushes on this side 
just making sure that the trench is uh, completed. Here, this is the construction side. The climber barrier is is folded away from us towards the uh, sensitive habitat, and uh, we're just taking a quick look at the uh, seam here. The overlap, with, that's what it should look like when it's finished. Uh, and that pretty much finishes the installation of this 40-foot section. Um, just want to mention that uh, E-Fence is available in orange also. It can serve as a uh, safety fence and, you know, uh, a safety construction um, perimeter fence as well. So you can do uh, exclusion, wildlife exclusion. You can do safety, safety barrier, uh, all in the same trench.